Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is Adrian. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's play some Age of Civilizations 2. And we're going to be just kind of messing around in the modern world scenario. Um, I've been recently taking a history class at my university on Brazil. And so I wanted to play as Brazil. And we're going to be playing in the modern day, forming ourselves a nice Brazilian empire. And I just wanted to kind of talk about the history of Brazil and play through the game. Have a good time. So let's jump on in. Well, before we jump on in, um, we're 11th in the world as a power. We have uh, Michelle Temer as our president. We have a population of 1.492 million, I guess. It's not accurate number. I think it's just for the game. Um, our capital is Brasilia. We have uh, Sao Paulo as our largest city, however. We are a republic. We have 75% happiness, and most of our population is Brazilian. The technology level is 0 0.4, which seems pretty shitty. We have a pretty decent economy, though, so that's good. Let's go to options here. Uh, difficulty normal, game speed. Okay. Yep, everything just normal. Whoopsies. Whoopsies. There we go. There we go. Okay. Playing as Brazil. Let's go ahead and jump on in. All right. <clears throat> okay. So let's go and open up our budget. Let's go to taxes. We're going to raise up our taxes as much as we can without pissing people off. Um, let's definitely bump up the research. Needs to be probably about 30% or so. Uh, investments, probably. So let's do research. Let's do research. Yeah, 30%. Let's leave goods and, and investments at 20%. Then we're going to need to build ourselves an army. So, do we even have armed forces right now? Okay, so we have troops in Brasilia. Wow, really? I can't see jack shit from this far away. Uh, I wonder. Game needs to be restarted. Okay, province settings. Okay. Let's see, audio. Audio is good. Font size. Turn between auto save. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's grab these troops. So, um, so yeah. So we're here in in Brazil. Obviously, this is the modern world. So there, you know, there's the United States, there's Mexico, and that sort of thing. Let's actually go ahead and take a look here at our, at our research. Let's go for um. Population growth, let's do like 10 points. Company growth, 5. Income taxation, 5. Income production, 5. Administration, 5. Let's do military upkeep like the rest. Yeah. Okay. So we're in the year 2018, obviously. But uh, let's talk about how Brazil got to be where it was. So obviously it was colonized by Portugal in the 1500s, the 1600s, the 1700s. And finally, in 1807... Um, during the Napoleonic Wars, Napoleon had Napoleon had invaded um, Portugal because Portugal was aligned with uh, Great Britain or the United Kingdom of Great Britain, and um, the Portuguese court eventually fled to Brazil. They fled to Rio de Janeiro, which is here, and they um, set up shop there to rule the empire. And they actually liked it so much, they didn't want to leave. <laughs> but eventually, in 1820, there was a um, liberal constitutionalist rebellion in Portugal. And so eventually, the king of Portugal had to go back. And he left his son in charge of Brazil. And in 1822, the son was pressured by a lot of different, you know, interest groups and such. Nobles, you know, that sort of thing. And they said, hey, you should declare independence from Portugal and be your own country will proclaim you emperor because pretty much Portugal is going to try and rein in Brazil's autonomy. You know, we've been ruling ourselves and actually been very successful here for like 20 years or about that, maybe like 12 years or so. And so, um, his name was Pedro. His name is Pedro. He was actually proclaimed, uh, Pedro the first of the Brazilian empire, um, or emperor of Brazil. He was actually technically it's in the constitution. Uh, they have a constitution of 1824 of Brazil. Technically, his title is the Perpetual Defender of Brazil. But pretty much he was an emperor. 
And so Pedro um, declared independence from the Portuguese Empire and his father. And he won. Pretty much he won. By like late 1823, uh, 1824, 20, 1825, Portugal realized that Brazil was independent and had no choice. You know, wasn't, wasn't going to be able to reconquer Brazil. It wasn't going to happen. And so born was the Brazilian Empire. And so uh, Pedro, the first reign from 1822 until 1831. In 1831, he uh, announced, renounced the throne. He abdicated in favor of his son, Pedro II. His son was, I believe, only five years old in 1831. So Regency was set up um, in, you know, to rule in place of the son. Uh, and then in 1840, when the son was, I believe, 15 years old, 14 or 15 years old, um, he assumed the throne. He was just a boy. Although he had, he had, you know, the help of a lot of counselors and that sort of thing. A lot of very wise, wise men. And so, um, in 1840, he took the throne and then he ruled, believe it or not, from 1840 to 1889. He ruled 49 years in Brazil. And he actually made Brazil at that time, Brazil would have been a major player in the world. Like, Great Britain and Brazil and the United States saw each other as equals. Because Brazil was was really that powerful. Um, they had slavery until 1888. Brazil was actually the last country on Earth to have slavery. Uh, legally, until 1888. That's when slavery was abolished in the Empire of Brazil. And uh, Brazil modernized. Brazil was very stable. Um, there were a few revolts and things in the early 1830s, 1840s. Um... In, internally, there were like like small skirmishes and, and sort of militancies uh, or militants, you know, kind of, you know, having an arrest, you know, Indians and, and peasants and just whole lots of stuff was happening in the 1830s and 1840s. But in comparison to the rest of Latin America, Brazil was the most stable country in pretty much anything south of the United States, pretty much. Um, so it was it was Brazil was a major player. In 1889, in 1889, um, there was a coup against the emperor. Pedro II was deposed, and a republic, what is called the Old Republic, Kotor. Um, the Old Republic was founded in 1889, and it, the coup was primarily um, led by a lot of military officers, and by these they weren't exactly liberal republicans they were they were liberal because they didn't want a monarchy but they weren't they weren't like so liberal that you know they were like progressives or you know like socialists communists that sort of thing um at the time in 1889 brazil was a very conservative society very conservative politically the military landowners merchants those were the guys who held power it wasn't so much the common people. And so in 1889, when there was this coup, pretty much the coup had no popular support. There had never been democracy in Brazil. There had never been any sort of representative government. Nothing like that. Um, everything pretty much was centered around the emperor and what was best for the country, you know, according to the emperor and his ministers and his council of state, as they called it. So... The Republic was from 1889 until 1930. And um, there was a lot of turmoil. There was a lot of, for the first few years of the, of the Republic, there were actually um, a couple of military dictatorships. There were specifically generals that were presidents of Brazil. And they, they ran things for, you know, a little while. And then eventually civilian presidents would, would, take, would take office. And, uh, you know, things were... We're at one point okay, and then at another point unstable. There was a lot of inequality in Brazil, and there was a lot of problems between, you know, Afro-Brazilians and then the, the more white population. There was extreme income inequality. Um, these huge landowners, you know, they held these huge estates. They made, you know, buckets and buckets of cash. You know, military officers and stuff like that made, you know, pretty decent money. And, um, th you know, there were a lot of people that were disenfranchised. There were a lot of people that were left out of the society, left out, left out of the political system. And so in 1930, there was a revolution. 
1930, there was a revolution called the Lieutenant's Movement. Um, I believe in Braz in Portuguese, they call it the Tenentes Movement, but it means Lieutenant, the Lieutenant Movement, or Lieutenantism. And so in 1930, the Old Republic was deposed by a movement of nationalist officers in the military corps. Um, and they put a guy in charge that was by the name of Getulio Vargas. And so Vargas was a fairly progressive figure, but he was also, he was supposedly, according to the military, he was malleable. He was somebody who could be controlled, somebody who could be influenced easily. And that was in 1930. And so eventually, pretty much everybody found out, oh shit, Getulio Vargas is actually not this guy who's so malleable. He's actually a pretty... Um, a pretty good political player. He was able to compromise with a lot of different groups. He was able to win some groups over, kind of shun other groups out of power. And by 1933, Getulio Vargas was actually quite popular with some people. A lot of the military officers liked him. Um, a lot of the poor folk in Brazil liked him. A lot of peasants, a lot of urban workers, lower class workers actually liked Getulio Vargas and his message and he pretty much consolidated power and was able to to, to rule um, in 1937 he declared what's called the Estado Novo Estado Novo which is called New State and pretty much he turned Brazil into a pseudo-fascist dictatorship he wrote a new constitution he Consolidated power. He, you know, created new government bureaucracies, that sort of thing. Think, think Nazi Germany, but like, there's no anti-Semitism. Think, like, fascist Italy, but not so imperialistic. You know, Italy, as far as being fascist, wanted to expand and and you know, kind of recreate this new Roman Empire. Nazi Germany wanted, you know, its living space, its Lebensraum, you know, but. The Estado Novo under Getulio Vargas was more about internal consolidation, internal identity, finding out what is Brazil and who are we and, you know, what are our values, that sort of thing. And so um, it's interesting because Getulio Vargas, a lot of people at that time in 1937 were actually worried that Getulio Vargas was pretty much going to be like a, a Nazi ally, you know, or a fascist sympathizer, a fascist ally in in latin america and to some extent that was true brazil actually had very good trade relations with nazi germany and with uh fascist italy and they actually used a lot of their weapons and military technology um brazil would sell a lot of oil to germany and germany would give a lot of steel to brazil and there was this 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 quite healthy relationship between the fascist powers but actually, Getulio Vargas, being the the practical, the practical leader that he was, he was a realist. He was a very um, he wasn't so much ideological. He was a very realistic political player, especially when he had, you know, dictatorial slash totalitarian powers from 1937 onward. Um, he actually realized the Nazis are probably not the best people to be friends with, because we've got the United States right above to our north. So actually, um, Getulio Vargas would actually turn hostile towards the fascist powers in the Axis. And um, Brazil was actually Brazil would actually declare war on the Nazis and the fascists in the 1940s, and would actually send troops to uh, participate in the Italian campaign of World War II. And um, in 1945, the military core of Brazil had decided, you know what, we've had enough of Getulio Vargas. He can't rule without our support. We're just gonna kick him out of office, and that's what happened. And so Getulio Vargas was kicked out of office in 1950 or 1945, and he would actually run for president in democratic elections in 19, I believe it was 1950 or 1951. And he actually won the election. He, he was actually victorious. Um, he was extremely popular and he won the election. Uh, there were conservatives and liberals that really could not compete with his type of popularity. You know, they tried to, you know, sway the election away from him, but they weren't able to do it. And um, he was actually so popular that during his presidency from 1951 to 54, 
there were a lot of conspiracies about trying to either stifle his influence, stifle his power, or just, you know, take him out of office. And eventually, uh, a conservative military clique uh, would depose him from power or wanted to depose him from power in 1954. The military was pretty much pretty much angling itself we're going to depose Vargas and Vargas actually committed suicide um, and he's renowned in Brazil to this day he's also hated by some people because some people say he was a dictator other people say he was really cool so that's interesting so yeah so that was in 1954 and then from 1954 to 1964 um, there was quote quote civilian government in Brazil there was actually a lot of politics a lot of power plays going on and in 1964, there was actually a military coup again in Brazil. The constitution was suspended. The president, the sitting president was deposed. And actually from 1964 to 1985, the military ruled Brazil in a military dictatorship. And it was actually relatively lax compared to other military dictatorships at the time. For example, Argentina and Chile had military dictatorships. And there was always stuff going on in the other countries as well. Uh, Mexico, by all standards, had a uh, dictatorship because of their revolutionary institutional party. And that didn't end until the 2000, the year 2000. And so from 1964 to 85, during, you know, the height of the Cold War, Brazil would be ruled by a right-wing conservative military dictatorship. And then from 1985 until pretty much 2018, they've, at least so far been ruled relatively democratically and here we are so now we want to decide what are we going to do in this present day what are we going to be up to well i think we should get back the province of uruguay it's actually called cisplatina for our empire in the early days of the brazilian empire um this this region here of uruguay was actually a province of the empire called cisplatina and it broke away in an independence war and it actually won. But we'll see if we can get it back. We will see if we can get it back. We may also invade uh, Paraguay, Bolivia, and the rest of South America. So who knows? So let's take a quick look around at our recruitable population. Let's actually take a look at our development here. Our development's kind of, kind of crap. Hmm. Montevideo. No, hold on. Our development, Sao Paulo, actually has the most development of any country or of any province of the empire. Or in the Republic. Interesting. <clears throat> Can we change our government form? I'm kind of curious about that, actually. Let's take a look at it. So, we can actually form the Kingdom of Brazil. It's kind of cool. Um, it was never a kingdom, though. It was an empire. So, I'm kind of curious what's up with that. Change type of government costs 18,000 pounds. We could become a monarchy, I guess, if we if we wanted to. Um, let's see. Technology, vassals, release vassal, move capital. Okay. Let's see. What about our technology level? How are we doing as far as that? So our technology level is, I believe, 0 0.4. Denmark's is 0 0.58. So they have the most, they have the best technology in the world. Wow. Apparently, Ethiopia has really good technology. <laughs> let's see. Let's actually take a look at recruitable population. Uh, holy shit. We can recruit quite a few people. Sweet. All right. So first things first, let's actually go ahead and let a few turns go by. First, let's become a kingdom. Let's become a monarchy. So we should let some time pass. In the meantime, we're going to be moving the armed forces, whatever army we have. It's quite small. We're going to move these guys to the border with Uruguay. Technology levels increase. Do income taxation. Okay, we got an auto save there. Okay. Perfect relations with the United States. Sounds good to me. I like that. I like the way that sounds. So form the Kingdom of Brazil. Why is it that we can't do that? I'm not really sure why. Kingdom of Brazil. Oh, okay. So we can't form the Kingdom of Brazil because we don't have Uruguay. That's kind of cool. So once we conquer the province of Cisplatina, we can form the Kingdom of Brazil. But first, I want to change our type of government form. So let's take a look at that. 
So it costs 18,904 gold. We also need to have a 0 0.4 technology level to change government form. We can go to fascism. We right now currently are a republic. We can go to monarchy. Acceptable taxation, 25%. Goods, 15%. Investments, 10%. Administration cost goes up, but income taxation and production goes up. Cost to recruit and cost to move. Looks like they stay the same. Defense bonus. Um, so administration costs and research costs are cheaper as a republic, but our income taxation goes goes down. So as a monarchy, we'll be better off. Be a horde. Interesting. So yeah, so let's switch to being a monarchy. Sure. So apparently we got an achievement. Monarchy. Adopt the monarchy government form. Interesting. Okay. So we are now the Empire of Brazil. Pretty cool. Let's actually, yeah, let's have good relations with, um, let's have good relations with the United States for sure. We want to do that. Good relations with those guys. Donald Trump is president. <laughs> so Michael Timur is apparently our ruler, I suppose. Okay. Yeah, so we want to get our administration cost down maybe a little bit. Okay, so yeah, we definitely want to read Uruguay. What's his population? How big? How many people does he have? 162,000 people. Relations. Okay. Okay, so we can form. So we are the Empire of Brazil. And uh, apparently we can form the Kingdom of Brazil. I'm not really sure why we'd want to be a kingdom versus an empire. So we'll probably just keep the empire, I think. We won't, we won't form the uh, quote, quote, kingdom. So now we need to recruit troops. So let's find out where we can recruit men from. Okay, let's let's try these interior cities, I think. Okay, we got an auto save there. Okay, let's see. Technology points. Military upkeep is going to be a big expense that we want to work on. Um, investments. So our, our population... Yeah, our population doesn't really grow that fast at all, which is unfortunate. Um, we may want to, to see where we can improve that. Okay, we got an autosave there. Okay, let's take a look here. So I have no idea how large of a military um, Uruguay has. So we should build a watchtower. Okay, we got uh, some troops. Okay. Cool. We'll probably invade with about 10,000 men or so. We're going to need some pretty decent numbers for this. Okay. I do kind of like that the game will change the name of your country depending on what government form you have. So the Empire of Brazil, that's pretty nice. What other government forms are there? So we're the only monarchy. Yeah, so we're the only monarchy. There's 22 monarchies, 57 republics, 129 democracies, and then one communism. So communism, I think, officially is the Republic of China. Uh, these are all republics. Uh, it looks like I'm one of the only monarchies around here. I mean, Spain and Morocco are technically monarchies. Um, interesting. United Kingdom. Let me see. So they're yeah. So they're a monarchy technically. Norway, Sweden is. We're a monarchy. Empire of Brazil. So we lose 220 people per day. Hmm. It's unfortunate. We probably need to focus more on goods. We're going to bring... Um, yeah, so we're going to bring goods up. We're going to reduce investment spending.
Oh, wow. Look at that. So a 10% increase in our goods has us now increasing our population by 556 per turn. That's pretty damn good. Holy shit, look at that. Wow. That's a lot. Cool. You know what? Let's reduce this this research here, I think. I can I, I kinda wanna use let's actually go to twenty percent there. I wanna use more of this for the military. Cause we I mean we need we need to have quite a few troops for the invasion of, of Uruguay here. How much does this cost? Okay. Let's see here. I'm kind of curious. Is there anything over here? Let me build a watchtower in this province. I want to see if there's anything here because I could probably just split these guys. And um, yeah, let's build a watchtower there. All right. Okay, so there is nothing. There is nothing here. Not that I see, anyway. I mean, I guess the possibility that there is actually something there is is there, but okay. So we have about yep, we have about ten thousand men now. Maybe a little more actually. Okay. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna send these guys here, these guys here, these guys over here, and then we'll just advance across the line. Sounds good to me. 2019 is the year we reclaim Cisplatina. Oh, cool. Oh, shit. Oh, that was awesome. I have no idea what's over here. Let's send like 500 that way. Let's send like 500 this way. The majority will go here though. Oh, come on, you bastards. <clears throat> nice. Okay, so we lost, uh, well, we killed 6.9 thousand to, to lose 6.5. Can we take everything? I think so. All right. There we go. Cool. All righty. Let's go and assimilate a few of these places. We're going to make these Brazilian once again. Okay, there we go. So that went pretty well. Um, invading Argentina would be kind of a bitch. We'll see about doing that. Let's see, who is our next target? Bolivia? Invading Bolivia would be pretty pretty difficult. Um, we could attack a couple of these smaller guys. Suriname. That's French Guiana. I believe he... Isn't he... Is he his own country? Really? And then what about Guiana? Okay, so we're going to take out these guys, I think, first. These guys all appear to be their own... Your own country, I suppose. Traveling by sea can be quite um, quicker because because sea tiles are bigger than land tiles. Hmm. 
Yeah, so these guys are going to move by C. And then we can actually train up. Well, we can actually do a few things. We can actually change our growth rate or we can increase our research or investments. Let's increase some investments there. Let's raise some troops from up here. All right. So at, at the independence of Brazil, this is what the Empire of Brazil looked like. Eventually, Cisplatina would be lost, though. But we got it back. So that's kind of cool. Let's get ourselves... I'm actually going to get ourselves a watchtower here. Okay, so 116 men there. Overwhelming numbers never hurts. Pretty sure we've drained this location of recruitable population. Let's take a look. Pretty much. Okay. Is that all of our troops? That's everybody? Okay. Let's see, this is Makapa. Okay, so let's invade this little guy here. Apparently we've got um, domestic relations suspended with the US. So this is French Guiana. So he is not a vassal of France or anything? I guess not. <laughs> okay. Full annexation of him. Let's go to assimilate some stuff. Okay, let's see. We have friendly relations with Senegal, apparently. Um, let's see. Our population is 1.72 million. We grow by 731 per day. And most of our population is Brazilian. So, let's take Suriname and Guiana. And then I think Paraguay is our next target. Let's take a look here at people population. Okay, so there's not a lot of manpower up here. Uh, Manaus is not bad. Okay, military upkeep, administration, income taxation. This is from the capital, so Brasilia is over here. These guys, these guys are pretty far away. Okay. Let's see. So the United States um, is number one. China's number two. India's number three. Russia number four. Germany, Indonesia, an undiscovered country. And then there's us. Okay. So we're doing okay on population score. Economic score is all right. Military or no, there's no military scores of prestige. Okay. Prestige technically. Got an auto save there. Okay. We got uh, a distant an outbreak of dysentery. It's unfortunate. Um, let's actually take a look. How much does our economy grow? So we get 529 growth as far as population. What about our economy though? I'm kind of curious about that. How 
How do I see that, actually? Mm, let's go to the budget screen. So, research level, yep. We're spending a lot of money in research and technology. Investments, higher development level means better economy and more income from your provinces. Average development, 0 0.10, so we get 20% growth. Okay. Let's build a watchtower, I think, here. This place is quite remote, so it's expensive to build structures. Okay, but I think we can invade. No allies or anything? He's friendly with Austria, apparently. Damn. Pretty decent troops, I'll admit. Pretty decent numbers. He had about six, 7,000 men. It's not bad. I'll give him that one. It's not bad. Okay, so we've taken everything here. Okay, we need to do just a little bit of assimilation here. Okay, that was actually really kind of the only place we needed to do assimilation. The rest are pretty stable. The province, the rest of the provinces are actually pretty stable. So okay. Let's take a look here. Okay, so we've integrated Uruguay. It's nice. Our Brazil. Yep, Guiana, you will be destroyed. We'll probably vassalize most of these guys, though. On the outside. Vassalization will need to happen. Okay, we're running out of manpower here in the in the northern provinces. Sao Paulo has the largest recruitable population. Rio de Janeiro is second. Brasilia is third. Let's put, let's put about 1,000 men here. Alright, we're pretty much out of manpower from this province. Okay, let's see. So I got 2,500, 2,500. Should be enough. Let's see. What is our population growth at this present moment? Let's see, what do we gain? We get about 210 per month. Yeah, we had a disease outbreak, though. That's true. Let's build ourselves a watchtower here. See what I can find. Okay, not really much. He's only got a population of 100,000. All right, I think we're ready. Let's go and do it.
Oh, shit. He had most of his army in the capital, little bastard. Oh, wow, so he attacked me. Okay. So he had attacked me in, in this position. Okay. Sweet. Take everything there. We got to integrate just a couple provinces. Not, nothing too crazy. Okay. Let's move to the Paraguayan border. So the thing is, is in the year 1864, if I remember correctly, 1864, there was a war between Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina. And I believe Uruguay was, was involved in that as well. It was against Paraguay. And um, the war lasted for years, but the war pretty much made the military of Brazil realize that they had political power. Um, whoa. All right, damn. Okay, so let's keep working on this here. We've got a insult from Malaysia. Let's take a look here. Recruitable population. Holy shit, that was a lot. Wow. Let's get about a thousand men here. Let's get about a thousand men in that province. We probably need about three or four thousand, I think, in each one of these. I'm thinking we could split this force, but let me get a watchtower, I think, right here. Because I'm not sure, I'm not sure what he has. Let's take uh, income taxation there. Okay. Okay. This is a uh, Presidente Prudente. It's next to, let's see, that's Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro. Okay. Well, you know, truthfully, I'd actually probably rather recruit from these provinces, I think. You don't want to recruit from your major industrial centers because it takes away from your income. So let's, let's, let's recruit from the hinterlands out here. Okay, so what do we have now? So we have about 1,500, 2,000 there. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty decent military force. Um, part of me thinks getting a watchtower here would allow me to see what's over here in Encarnacion. Hmm. Let's see, so we're fourth in the world for military power. Development, average development 0 0.13. Technology is 0 0.58, which is pretty pretty decent. Taiwan is 0 0.61. We're almost the most technologically advanced country on Earth. Damn. Not bad. Okay, let's invade. I think no allies, right? No allies. We are going to finish what it is that we started back in 1864. Well, we didn't we didn't start it necessarily. Well, I don't know. I mean, all right, maybe maybe Brazil did start the Paraguayan War. <laughs> maybe that is true.
No, you know what? I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send all you guys there. You go there. You go there. You send. I'm gonna send half here. Let's send half here. Oh shit! Check that out. That's cool. Ooh. Whoa, that sucks. Ah, oh, fuck. Hey, there we go. We just Hearts of Iron 4, that motherfucker. <laughs> nice. Okay, so now, what do we do? Do we annex it? Vassalize it? Demand vassalization? War reps. Could do that. Or annex it. Looks a little weird. Yeah, sure, all right. That's fine. All right, population growth, keep improving on that. Friendly civilizations, Hungary. There's Argentina. Now, a war between Brazil and Argentina, that would be some shit, because those guys have those guys have a pretty fucking decent population. That would be some shit. That'd be like Hearts of Iron 4 status right there. Let's integrate all these these different provinces here. Okay. See, let's assimilate a little more here, maybe. Sure. Why not? All right. So we can form the Kingdom of Brazil here. Yeah, I, like I said, I don't really know why we want to be a Kingdom of Brazil compared to an empire, so I don't know. But so far, we've conquered Paraguay, Cisplatina, and all of the Guiana. Next, perhaps, is Bolivia. But in the meantime, we're going to take a quick break here. We have 2.12 million people. United States has a lot. Canada's got a lot. United Kingdom, France, Germany's got a lot. Mother Russia has a lot. Holy shit! What the hell, India? What did you do to China? What did Japan do? Oh my god. What is happening here? Thailand, Laos, Vietnam. Fucking Pakistan's going crazy over here. Afghanistan, Kazakhstan's still there. Turkey. Bulgaria, Romania. Let's see, Germany hasn't done anything. Poland, Belarus, Lithuania, Czech Republic. Nothing's really happened over here, although France is apparently eating some of Italy. Apparently, fucking Finland conquered, like, Norway. <laughs> Jesus. And apparently, Egypt is at war with Sudan. That makes sense. 
I mean, that was, okay, that one I'll, I'll forgive. That makes sense. Why the hell is Ethiopia still called Abyssinia? This is 2024. Damn, so we're not the only ones who have been uh, conquering shit. Okay. Interesting. All right. Well, I'm going to take a break here, guys. I will... Let's see. Save game. Game will be saved next turn. Okay. I will see you guys in the uh, next episode. If there is another one, let me know if you guys are enjoying this. And uh, I'll see you guys very, very soon. Thanks so much.